Praise the Lord. We can't be afraid, amen, to go to the Lord. And the Bible says, come unto me, amen, all of us that are heavy laden tonight. Well, I want to talk to you for the next few minutes about living in victory. And uh, I want to take you to uh, Joshua, if you'll go with me to the book of Joshua tonight. We may spend some time in this book, the book of Joshua. And we're going to go to chapter 1, and we're going to read a few verses here and trust the Lord to just speak to us tonight in a mighty way. What an awesome God we serve tonight, and how many knows He is able to help you through anything and be an overcomer. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, came, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the land of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Let us pray. Fathers, tonight, thank you for the reading of the Word. Thank you for your courage, and Lord, that you have given us. Thank you for all these things, Lord. Help us to stand and be strong and full of courage, Lord, as we face the things we face in life. We ask you, Lord, that we may be more than conquerors. And Lord, that we are overcomers tonight to live in victory, live victorious lives through Christ Jesus. I pray your blessing upon each person to here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many knows that in the opening book of Joshua, as we first dive into this chapter, it says, notice the first words now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it didn't stop. How many knows the program didn't stop? Church didn't die. Church didn't dry up. Everything continued. How many knows just because Moses is dead doesn't mean God's dead? Doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's dead. I can tell you when they took Aaron up to the top of that mountain, when it was time for Aaron to die, they would take the robes from him. And they stripped him of those robes and that mitre, and they put them on their son. But they buried, I can tell you they buried Aaron, but they didn't bury the Holy Spirit. And just like Moses, when he died, he continued, the Lord continued to find him someone that he could work through and use, and that was the servant Joshua, who was there with Moses during many of these things that happened. And so we have to realize that, how I many knows God continues even now in the midst of this troubled nation, in the midst of troubled lives, in the midst of troubled churches, in a world that seems to have lost its moral compass, in a world that seems to be lost tonight. How I many knows God still has men and women of God that he can use tonight? How many times did God say, be courageous? How many times did he tell us to be of good courage and be not afraid? How many knows there, if, if, there was something, if there was nothing to be afraid of, why would he tell us not to be afraid? There are things out there that would shriek, that would cause you to, to be fearful, that cause you to shriek back, 
to say this can't be done or to cause us to doubt and to not, and not understand things. But I can tell you, God said to be of good courage tonight. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. How many believe if he was with Joshua, he'll be with us tonight. He'll be with all of us here. He's made a promise that just because Moses has died, the church didn't die. Just because Moses is dead, the program's not dead. Everything continues on, continues to go on. How many believe Jesus is still coming after a church that's made herself ready? He's, he's not walking the uh, floors of heaven wondering what he's going to do. He's not wringing his hands trying to figure out how he's going to do this. How many believe he has a plan from the beginning and that plan is still in force today? And so we have to recognize that Moses, the servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over Jordan, thou and all the people into the land which I give thee, even <coughs> to the children of Israel. So he's telling us, I believe tonight that no matter what happens, no matter what we're going through, no matter what struggles we face, that we have a God inside of us, that Christ lives in us, the hope of glory gives us the ability to stand even when it looks like that it's impossibilities. When the world seems to be so far gone that there's no hope, I can tell you there's hope in Christ tonight. We are the hope of this world. Do you understand? We have the answers to every problem in human life. I can tell you every answer we need is in this book tonight. Every answer to every problem in America how many believes is still in the Bible tonight? Every problem you're going through, every fear you face, everything you're having to deal with tonight, how many believes we can go to the rock? David said, when my heart is overwhelmed within me, I'll go to the rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. I will go to him who is the possessor. I can tell you, he will give you strength tonight. The children of Israel were in the wilderness. They had come out of the land of Egypt and they were headed toward Canaan. It's a journey, folks. It is, it's not something we accomplish. Listen, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. We're going in it for the long haul. How many believe that it's a process of time that we're going to face the hardships? We're going to face in, in troubles. We're going to face sickness. We're going to face disease. We're going to face uh, uh, difficulties. But I can tell you, with the help of God, how many believe you are standing tonight as a testimony of the greatest miracle in this world that Jesus Christ has dealt with you and gave you life and gave you the ability to overcome everything that's come against you. Canaan land is the promised land, the land of victory and the land of peace. God said, now cross over Jordan and possess this great land, this vast land that flows with milk and honey. It's yours. I've given it to you. Listen, he's already given it to them and they haven't even got there yet. It's a promise from God. God says, I've already given it to you. It's yours. All you've got to do is possess it. How many believe that tonight, if the church would recognize and realize tonight, we're already possessors tonight. We just take possession. We've got to do that through Christ's name tonight. Understand, Egypt can represent the domain of the, of the lost person. While the children of Israel were in Egypt, they were under the cruel power of Pharaoh. Pharaoh had them in the, his domain. He was a cruel taskmaster, and he represents Satan. And Egypt, the land of bondage, represents the condition of every lost person who is in bondage to sin tonight. But I can tell you, remember, God delivered them out of Egypt by a miracle, the death of the Passover lamb. What am I trying to tell you tonight is that Canaan's land is not heaven. It's not a perfect place. It's not a place beyond trouble. It's not a place without problems. But it is a place we can still live in victory in spite of every giant, in spite of every problem, in spite of every uh, uh, immoral issue out there in this world tonight. How many believe the church can still be strong and of good courage and hold on to God tonight? When Enoch walked with God, it was a wicked day. It was a terrible time. It was wicked. They had wickedness. I'm telling you that, that things were going on. The Bible said that Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. I can tell you in an evil generation such as we live today, I believe the church without excuse can live a life full of God and direction and have power with God tonight to move mountains and to see the sick relieved and to see Jesus come and move in our services tonight without fear and failure dominating the church tonight. 
We are people of God. Canaan's land is not a perfect place. People died in Canaan's land. People's, people had heartaches in Canaan's land. They fought. They had skirmishes. They had wars. But the bottom line is, folks, God gave them victory. He said, every battle you fight, I'll go with you. Everywhere the sole of your foot place it on, I'll give you that land. It's yours. I'm, I'm going to vomit out that evil. Those people that have possessed this land, I'm going to take it away from them. And I'm going to give it to a people that are in love with God tonight. The church is not possessing the full inheritance tonight. Do you understand that God intends for us to be about His business? How many believe we could see even greater miracles today than what we're seeing? How many believe we could see a greater an experience with God than we've yet to see in any time in history? I believe that somebody said, no, it's dark outside. The darker it gets, the brighter the light shines. Don't matter how dark it is. Don't matter how much the, the world has gone mad and lost her ability to discern good and evil and doesn't know which way is right and which way is wrong. That's where the church comes in, folks. You have not lost your ability to discern good and evil. You still have an inner witness. You have the guidance of the Holy Spirit that said, I'll lead you and guide you into all truth tonight. And we have power over the enemy. We have victory tonight, folks. How many believe we can live in victory? Even when disappointment comes, how many believe we can still live in victory? Even when Moses dies, the children of Israel could still live in victory. God raised up another leader, Joshua. He kept them going. He kept it going. I can tell you, folks, those people in Egypt, that, that Egypt represented a place of sin, a place of bondage. That's where the devil holds people captive tonight. Do you know there are lost sinners out there tonight being held captive by the devil's devices and by the devil's schemes and plans and they're being held in bondage tonight and they need a deliverer and that deliverer is Jesus. I can tell you folks, we have the ability to stand up in the Pharaoh's face and decree, let my people go. I believe tonight that the church ought to be able to stand against the powers of darkness and preach under the anointing and the spirit of Christ that the conviction could be so strong that chains will be broken over people living in sin tonight. Can somebody give God a hand? I'm telling you, we have the ability to break through. We have the breakthrough ability. Pharaoh had them in his domain. He was cruel taskmaster. How many of those sins are cruel taskmaster? The devil's a cruel taskmaster. Egypt, a land of bondage, represents a condition of every lost person in bondage to sin. How many knows that, that Pharaoh created conditions for evil to, 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 to actually uh, grow? Uh, he, that, that, uh, I can tell you, Egypt had created conditions of held in people in bondage, in cruel and, and, cruel and unusual punishment, and, and being uh, 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 just holding those children of Israel captive and treating them, mistreating them, and, and, and throwing their children. I can tell you, killing their children, throwing them in the Nile River, uh, uh, feeding them to the crocodiles. I can tell you, scared to death that they were going to outnumber them and rise up and they'd be. Uh, he didn't realize. I can tell you, God was raising up a deliverer. And when Moses came along, they couldn't find him. They couldn't drown him. You know what happened? He ended up being raised out under Pharaoh's nose as the next king and the next Pharaoh. I can tell you they fed him the finest food, sent him to the finest colleges in Egypt. And when he got done with him, I can tell you God said, it's time to go. You're out of here. You're not one of them. Take my people in the scope. We live in a world, folks, but one day God's going to tell us to get, we're coming out of here. Canaan may not be heaven, but it is a place we can live in victory in spite of the problems, in spite of all the things that's coming against us. We can still have victory. God delivered them out of Egypt by miracle. They passed through the Red Sea and entered into a vast desert called the wilderness. Now, it's all right to be in the wilderness for a little while, folks. Every one of us, at some time or another, have experienced the wilderness. But it's, the problem is, we don't need to stay there forever. Amen. There comes a time when God says it's time to leave this place. It's time to move on. It's time to, to get out of there. I can tell you, if they hadn't have doubted God, if the, if the ten spies hadn't have come back with a cruel and, and, and a report and, and full of uh, all kinds of, 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 of discouragement, I can tell you they would have been out of that wilderness 40 years earlier. But it cost them. They had to spend more time in the wilderness because of unbelief. 
because of, the, uh, because of these ten spies. I love this illustration. You may have heard this and you may hear it again. But I can tell you there's a lot of kids named Joshua and Caleb tonight. <laughs> But them ten spies, nobody knows their name tonight. Nobody cares. Nobody naming their kids after them tonight. I can tell you there's hundreds and thousands of Josephs tonight. I can tell you all over this world, that land of Israel is full of people named Joseph. I can tell you, he left a mark on that place. He left a mark in Egypt. I can tell you there's children named Joseph everywhere. How many believe when God is in something, hell can't put the fire out, the devil can't stop God, neither can he stop the church. Those ten spies may have hindered some things for a little while. Paul said, I was hindered. I wanted to come to you sooner. I was hindered by Satan. But I can tell you, we're going through anyway. We're going on just the same. It has to be a time where every one of us go through the wilderness experience. Problem is, we can stay too long. How many of you can stay too long somewhere in the wilderness and become carnal? After a while... Manna is no longer good. It's no longer a miracle. It's like, oh, this stuff is... You know, I'm tired of this manna. <laughs> I, I'd like to have something else to eat. This, you know, I, I'm tired of angel food cake. I'm tired of eating what angels eat. I, I want something else. That's what happened to them. They got bored. They got, they got grumpy. They, got, they, they started just complaining about everything. I can tell you when the church sits still too long, everything grumbling and murmuring and complaining will overshadow and over, uh, overcome all the shouting, the victory that needs to be heard tonight. I can tell you when Moses was up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments, and he came down with... Joshua, and they came down from the mountain and they heard singing and dancing. They heard shouting. And Moses said, or Joshua said, oh, it's a, a shout of a war. And Moses said, no, that's a shout of sin. Moses knew what was going on down there. I'm just, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. When he got down there, he saw all them dancing without clothes on around. A, they, took the, they took the gold, all the gold they had, and melted it down and made them a golden calf. And they're just worshiping this golden calf. And they're dancing and having all kinds of illicit sin that's going on around them. And Moses comes down there and says, what in the world have you done? What have you done? He just gets mad and crushes that, uh, crushes that uh, golden calf, grinds it up in the water, and they have to end up drinking it. I can tell you, folks, it's, listen to me. You have to know something. Every time somebody's shouting, don't mean it's a shout of God. You hear me? Don't mean that everything that shouts is shouting for Jesus. Everything out there that's shouting tonight, I can tell you, that devil's shouting louder than some Christians tonight. That devil's church is shouting louder than God's church shouts at times. Can somebody say amen tonight? I a lot of dancing going on, a lot of shouting going on, but there ain't no Jesus uh, in some of it tonight. Well, I've lost my crowd tonight. Let me tell you something. Remember, God delivered them out of that. They passed through the Red Sea. They entered into the wilderness. <clears throat> Can't stay in the wilderness too long. If you stay there too long, how many knows you become carnal? When you become carnal, how many knows you lose your ability to hear? You become deaf to the Word of God. You become tone deaf to the things of God. We no longer uh, uh, want excited about hearing things. I can tell you the problem is you stay too long, you get carnal, and you're not, ever, you're not able to mature, you're not able to grow. There are children in this country, there are children in third world countries, they're, 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 they're stunted, their growth is stunted. They're not able to mature. They can't grow. They don't have the, the, the food. They don't get the nutrients. They're not getting everything they need. Their, their growth is stunted by all kinds of issues and problems. How many believe as long as we allow the carnality of this world to be uh, uh, for us to participate in, how many knows it, it'll stunt your growth if you're not careful and you can't move on to maturity? We have to move on. We have to become fearless. How many believe we've got to become fearless tonight? Let's, let's be a fearless people tonight. He told Joshua, it's amazing how many times here 
He tells him to be courageous. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given you. He didn't say every place your foot goes, I'll give it to you. He said, I've already given it to you, as I did unto Moses. From the wilderness of Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward going down the sun shall be your coast. No man, listen to this, there should be not any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Hallelujah. How many believe the church can stand against any enemy of this world tonight? How many believe we can stand against the devil tonight? The Bible teaches us as soon he'll be under our feet. How many believe we're going to put him under our feet? If you read in the book of, if you read in this Joshua, this book, you read far enough into this book, there's a place where they come to, to war. I can tell you there's a place you can see all of this happening. When you read the Old Testament, you see the wars that went on. You see what Moses went through. You see everything that happened, but God led them. How many believe he gave them victory every time? Unless disobedience was involved, and how many of those then things would go wrong? But I can tell you God is able. God is able to do a great thing here tonight. I can tell you folks, they passed through. Listen to me. A lot of folks come out of Egypt. A lot of folks left Egypt. But I believe a lot of them never got saved. Never got, never got real deliverance. Got delivered physically, but never got delivered spiritually. They kept the mind state. Let me tell you something about a lot. Wife. I mean, it was Lot's wife came out of Sodom. But Sodom never came out of her. The Bible says when Lot came out of Sodom, the angels had to drag him out, pretty much. And told him not to look back when they heard the screams and the cries and they heard the noises, not to turn back. But you know what? Lot's wife's heart was still in Sodom. And a lot of those people in this story said, let's go back to Egypt where we had melons and cucumbers and all kinds of good things. And it wasn't so bad under Pharaoh. It wasn't such a bad life after all. It was horrible while they were there. But all of a sudden now it's a good place to be. I can tell you these people that came out, a lot of them came out physically. But mentally, how many of those they still lived in Egypt? But the first time they find themselves in the wilderness experience, they lose their victory and they lose their joy. I can tell you, the first time we fall into disobedience, when we, when we get wrapped up in, in the world's situation. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I, I watch enough of that news. It, just, it really gets under my skin. And it can really bother me and make me angry. And, and I get frustrated with what's going on in this nation right now. I'm, I'm sick to death of it. I just feel like I've, I, you know, I've, some of you, sometimes you just have to turn it off and walk away from it because it, it's disgusting. But I can tell you, I just have to remind myself that Jesus Christ is still on the throne and that he's coming after a church and that we're leaving this place. This is not my home. God has to constantly remind me this is not my home. I am looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Now, Canaan is a land of victory. Canaan is not heaven. Do you understand that? Amen. It's not a type of heaven. You don't fight in heaven. There's going to be no wars in heaven. There ain't going to be no bickering and fighting in heaven. Now, Canaan had a lot of that going on. I can tell you there's a warfare in Canaan. There's sin in Canaan. But I can tell you it's still a place we can live in victory. What God is trying to tell us is, is in Canaan's land, they could still live in victory. In a place of sin and disruption and disillusionment, and all kinds of sin, and, and all kinds of, 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 of distractions. How many believe God is saying you can still have the victory? How many believe the church can still live in victory in spite of what's going on around us right now? We can still have victory. There are giants to be slain in Canaan. I can tell a lot of giants to be slain tonight. How many believe God's still in the giant killing business? A lot of giants out there tonight. Maybe there's a giant in your life tonight that needs slaying. Giant doesn't have to be a physical giant. Doesn't have to be a 10 foot man or to be a 10 foot lady. I can tell you folks, it can be anything in your life that is blocking you and keeping you from doing and, and living in victory tonight. A lot of giants need to be slain tonight. 
It's the first of the year. It's, it's January the 4th. How many believe there's a lot of things? People all over America tonight making resolutions. People decide, I'm, I'm going to get fitter tonight. I'm, I'm going to do better. I'm going to come to church more. I'm, I'm going to read my Bible more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this more. I'm going to do that more. You know, every, every January, gym gyms, I'm talking about workout gyms that fill up in January all over this country. About March, about February, end of February 1st. Hey, listen, it goes back to normal business as usual. All them people decide to take, make a, a change in their life. How I many knows about six weeks into it decide this ain't worth it. Going to be giants to slay. They're going to be victories to win. There's milk and honey over there, folks. Mmm. Heard one preacher say, if there's milk over there, there's some cows over there. There's some honey over there. There's some bees over there. There's some bees. There's some flowers. Oh, my. You can't just look at that. You've got to look beyond. Amen. How many people just when you're driving down the road, you just see 10 feet in front of you? How many looking at looking around, looking ahead, seeing what's coming? Look at, you're looking. You got, it's the same way with God. You can't just focus on, on just uh, looking and, and not observing Everything. How many believe God has a great plan for His church tonight? Cain's the land of victory. It's not heaven, but it is. It is. It's not even a type of heaven. It's. It's a place of warfare. It's a place where sin is in Canaan. There are giants to be slain. There will be failures and troubles in Canaan. There will be battles to be fought, but there will be victories to win. Hallelujah. The greater the battle, the sweeter the victory. We got to keep. We got to know and we got to choose wisely and we got to make good decisions. Amen. Don't be like Napoleon, that guy that came to Napoleon one time. They had fought this huge battle and uh, they had won and uh, they just about wiped out Napoleon's army. The other army was slain. The runner came to him and said, We've won, we've won. He said, My Lord, son, uh, another such victory will be wiped out. You don't want a victory at everything. A victory at failure. You don't want to... You, listen, you want to do what's right, do it right for the right reasons. We don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to do things that, uh, that out of, uh, out of, outside of love tonight. How many of those, the Bible said that to treat people with love and kindness. And when we correct people, how many of those, we need to correct them in love? We don't need whips, and we don't, we don't need to be uh, ornery about it. That's what Pharaoh did. That's what, that's what Egypt did. How many believe But God dealt with our heart, and that's how we deal with people tonight. There's going to be giants to slay. There's going to be failures in Canaan. There's going to be battles and skirmishes, but there is going to be victories. How many knows we can live in victory in Canaan's land? Rather, but rather, Canaan is a picture of the believer's possession. The victorious life that a Christian is supposed to live where we overcome and conquer. Folks, it's a picture tonight where we possess. It's a picture of a place of victory tonight. It's a place where you and I discover uh, new victories. We have new battles. We have all kinds of things we face, new giants. But how many of us, we will face, uh, we'll face all kinds of opportunities. But I can tell you, folks, at the end of the day, victory belongs to the children of God. How many of us, Satan's a defeated foe? We treat him like he's some kind of, you know, I mean, we give him so much more credit than he deserves tonight. Do you know that Jesus uh, made an open shame of his powers on the cross? Do you know the Bible said if Satan and all of hell had known, they'd have never crucified Jesus? It, was, it backfired. What they thought was a great victory turned out to be the worst war, the worst loss they could ever imagine. I can tell you, folks, don't allow the enemy 
to make you think you're a loser. Don't let the devil pin you in a corner and make you think that you're full of failure and that you're never going to get back up and you're never going to be restored. How many believes that Jesus Christ is the restorer? How many believes that he's reconciling us back to the Father? I can tell you, folks, we're going to walk in faith. We're going to, we're going to pray in the Spirit. We're going to rise up and be a church in a mighty army that God is raising up in this hour that when the world gets so messed up and confused, at some point, they're going to turn and look at the church and say, oh, well, we missed it. We missed it. Oh, my. Don't let failures destroy you. Don't let the devil intimidate you tonight. I can tell you, a lot of bark. How many believe the devil's got a loud bark tonight? I've seen dogs that bark. And they was, you stand up to them, they just run, turn around, tuck their tail and run. Now, there are dogs that will not back down. But there are some that just bark. I mean, just bark to be barking. And that's what the devil does. He just barks and barks and barks, and people run in fear and hide. Canaan is a picture of believer's possession, victorious living that a Christian is supposed to live where we overcome and we conquer. Canaan meant release. Oh, wow. Canaan means release. You see, up until this time, they had been a nation of slaves. But now they had been set free and were to live a life of freedom. How many believe whom the Son is set free is free indeed tonight? If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed tonight. Free from oppression. Free from sin. Free from the devil's uh, attacks and assaults. Yes, we're going to get muddy at times. We're going to get, we're going to get scuffed up. And we're going to have some skirmishes. And we're going to see uh, things are going to happen. And we're going to feel beat down and beat up. But I can tell you, we're going to keep getting up. We're going to keep getting back up every single time. We keep getting up. Canaan meant release. You see, until this time, they had been a nation of slaves, but now they had been set free and were to live it, a life of freedom. The Word of God says to, be, to the born-again believer in Romans 6, 14, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. How many believes that sin no longer has dominion over the church any longer? Sin no longer has dominion over over God's people. Paul said, you are, he talked in Romans, he talked in chapter 6, he talked about the freedom, he talked about uh, uh, being free from sin. Shall we continue in sin because grace abounds? No, we can, we, we're free from that bondage tonight. We don't have to listen to Pharaoh. We don't have to listen to him bark out orders. We don't have to, to curl up under a hot sun. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to live in darkness. How many believe we are the children of light and we've been given grace and we've been given a beyond anything we could ever imagine tonight. I've come to tell you, Canaan represents freedom. The Word of God says in John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The unbeliever is still in bondage tonight, folks, to sin. Satan has blinded their minds, and they are slaves to their lust, slaves to their impulses, slaves to their perversion. Have you ever seen such a time when people are slaves to sin tonight. Slaves to sin. Just, just so weak and so anemic that at the first sign of, 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 of temptation, they fall. They, you know, I like what one preacher said, I've overcome everything in this world except for temptation. But I can tell you, temptation, we can. God has made a way of escape. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you don't practice that, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to, to give you the strength and the courage and the victory, you'll fall prey to every little temptation that comes along. We've got to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. We've got to know. And we've got to wake up. We've got to recognize that we're not the losers tonight. Somebody asked Billy Graham one time, are you an optimist or or?" Pessimist. He said, I'm an optimist. They said, how come? These are senators. He was speaking at a, a luncheon there for some senators there. And they asked him if he was an optimist or pessimist. And he said, I'm an optimist. They said, how do you know that? He said, because I've read the Bible and I've read the last chapter. <laughs> <coughs> My God, if you ever get depressed, just leave the last chapter of the Bible. For heaven's sakes, we win. <laughs> In the end, Satan will be cast 
He, hell will be emptied. Amen. Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. Hello? Hello. He reminds you of your past. Just bring up his future. Amen. We know where he's going. But to the born again believer, Jesus set you free. The land of Canaan is a land of release. Not only was it a land of freedom, but it was a land of refreshing. You see, up until now, they had been in the desert, and they ate manna every day. They ate manna 365 days a year, and Numbers chapter 21, verse 5 says, they complained, their soul loathed this light bread. They despised it. They detested it and were sick of it. But Canaan is a land of milk and honey. We're going to be eating... We're going to be eating good when we get to Canaan. We're going to have steak and gravy. Amen. We're going to have the finest. We're going to be eating good. I mean, I'm telling you, we're going to have milk. We're going to be drinking. And we're, going to have, we're going to have the biggest bowl of cereal. I'm telling you, we're just going to have us a time we get over there. We're going to have all these big old grapes size of softballs. I ain't never seen a grape that big. But I have never heard of two men having to carry a bunch of grapes. Took two men to put grapes on a pole. How, since when have you had to see two men carrying a, a, a pole with grapes on it? It's big grapes. Pomegranates. I mean bananas. I'm, I'm whatever. I'm telling you, there's just fruit. It's just all kinds of. It was just a land of milk and honey. It's a, it a land that you didn't have to carry water in buckets. See, in Egypt, they had to take the water buckets to the Nile River and fill them up and carry them buckets of waters all the way back to wherever they was going to water and whatever they was going to plant and water. But in the land of milk and honey, there's hills and valleys. And when the rain comes down, it waters them valleys and waters them places. They don't have to carry water no more. How many believe it's a land of release? It's a land of freedom. It's a land of victory. Hallelujah. Some of you need to start living in victory. Live in victory. One day, folks, we're going we're gonna to make a full circle. One day, this thing's going to be over. And all those that have gone before us, we're going to have the biggest reunion you've ever seen in your life. We're going to all be together. It's going to be something to see. I can tell you, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to sit down by the river, <laughs> put my feet in that river. My God, I'm going to sit. I'm going to march around that city. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk up. I'm going to see Peter, James, and John. But the one I really want to see is the one that died for me. I want to see Jesus. How many knows that's what it's going to be worth at all? We're going to see them all. We're going to, we're going to sit down at the table. Hallelujah. We're, going to, we're going to have a feast, a marriage supper prepared for the Lamb. I'm telling you, it's going to be something you've never seen the likes of. Oh, wow, if we could just focus on what God has got in store for us, it'll be so much more greater than anything we've had to face in this world. My, my, Canaan is a land where there's going to be some problems, but it's a land of milk and honey, grapes and pomegranates. It's a land of abundance. It was a time of refreshing. The Word of God says in Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, that when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Word of God says that if we repent and be converted, that our sins may be blotted out, that when the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord, we're going to just enjoy that. We're going to soak that up and be saturated in it tonight. The desert was dry, but Canaan offered refreshing are you not tired of this old dry dust? Pale as a corpse type of Christianity. Anybody tired of that tonight? Tired of that pale Christianity? Tired of that dried up stuff that they're offering today? Tired of all of this entertainment that's being offered today rather than the gospel of Jesus Christ? Tired of all of this tonight that's taking the place of Christ. That's, he's, he, that pulpit, I can tell you, my pastor told me that pulpit is in the center of that church for one reason. That's because that's the focal point, the Word of God. Everything. Word of God takes precedent over everything. Did you know that? Over everything. My God, it ain't, it ain't, you don't have that choir, you don't have that piano sitting over here, or that, or that organ sitting here in the middle of that church, because that's not the focal point. How many believes the Word of God, whatever God says, that's what we have. That has to be the very focal point of Christianity.
God's voice one more time. I can tell you when John the Baptist came out of that wilderness, he came dressed in camel's hair. I can tell you he had his loins girt in leather. He come out there looking like a wild man, but he turned the banks of the Jordan River and set him up a pulpit and turned it into the greatest church. I'm telling you, he preached repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He told him, he said, if you've got two coats, take away, give one away. He said, if you're, if you're cheating people, quit cheating. If you're lying, quit lying. He said, get saved, repent, and be born again. And they rushed in that water, and he just baptized them. And I'm telling you, heaven just moved. And one day Jesus come. He had no sin. He's the Lamb of God. And John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God to come to take away the sin of the world. And Jesus come up to him and said, suffer me. Baptize me, John. He said, I'm not worthy. I can't baptize you. He said, suffer to be sold, for the Word of God has to be fulfilled. John baptized him in that river Jordan. I can tell you, John already was told by the Holy Spirit, whoever you take, whoever you see, the Spirit coming down and remaining on, this is he. Hallelujah. And when John saw the heavens open and God said, this is my beloved son, and the Spirit came down in the form of a dove and lighted on Jesus, he knew, he knew, he knew the Messiah, the Deliverer had come. I can tell you, folks, we've got too much of this Word of God in us tonight to be backing down. How many knows we've got too much truth? We cro- How many's crossed too many rivers? How many's seen too many sunsets? I can tell you, too many valleys I've been through. I've fought too many demons and devils. I've been through too much of that tonight to turn back. How many says we're going on? We're going. Canaan's not the last stop, but it is a place of victory till we get to heaven. Hallelujah. It's victory belongs to the church tonight. I'm going to stop here tonight. I got plenty more. We're going to spend some time in the book of Joshua uh, this first of the year. We'll be talking about victory and possessing the land and taking back everything. Learning to live in victory in spite of the evil that is oppressing the land tonight. Let's bow our heads tonight and we're going to ask the Lord to just speak.